I mentioned in the last module that grep was a particularly useful filter and so I wanted to give it its own special module and that is this module and I've called this module searching for text in files because that is what grep is particularly good at. Now I did say actually in the last module that grep's task was the removal of lines that do not contain certain text. Now if you want to be technical and pedantic that's exactly what grep does but uh, I'd like to rephrase that in uh, two other important ways. You could say that grep is then used to search for text in files or you can use it to search for text in standard input. Now what this means is of course is that if you specify a piece of text say a word like your name or mark or anything you like any, any word or other kind of text and you also specify say a file name then grep will look in that file and print out for you all the lines that contain that text or put another way it'll remove all the lines that do not contain the text thus you can see that grep is used to search for text or at least display certain text in files and of course whenever I say files I also mean standard input now also because grep is removing lines that do not contain certain text you can think of grep as a true filter in the sense that it is filtering out the stuff that you don't want to see. So yes, grep is a filter in the Unix sense, but it's also a filter in the real processing sense. I guess you could say then that it is really the only true filter. Anyway, grep is used in the following way. You put the word grep, then you put the text that you're searching for, and then you put the file names that you're searching in and grep will simply display all the lines in those files that contain the pattern that you specify. For example, you could say look for your own name, the word mark, in all the text files in the current directory. Let's have a look at that. Now I recall that there are a certain number of HTML files in this directory, so what I might do is do a little search for each one's body tag. You know, most HTML files have got a body tag in them so I'll search for the word body. That's all I'm doing here is I'm just searching for the word body in well all the files, every single file in the current directory. Let's see what files contain the word body. And there we go. That is the output. You'll find that every line that you can see contains the word body. Notice that each line is also prefixed by the name of the file that contains the line. So if you can see here, jjchap9.html collapsed on the top step. Surely no body, there's the word body, and there is a standard body tag there, and there's another standard body tag right there. So I hope that gives you an idea of how grep can be used. You can use it to search for text that is independent of whether it's uppercase or lowercase. You can say to grep by use of the various command line options, I want to see all the lines of text in a file that do not contain the pattern that you specify and so on. Incidentally I should mention that grep uses its own set of wildcards. Now what am I talking about? If you recall when we were discussing the ways that you could interpret file names in the shell and notice this is file names and file names only we could use wildcards like the asterisk and the question mark and the square brackets and so on. Grep also uses wildcards but it uses slightly different wildcards. They're similar but they're not the same. For example square brackets are used in a similar manner but the question mark is not used at all or at least it's not used in that particular way. Grep's set of wildcards that it uses are consistent with all programs in Unix that use regular expressions now the shell is not one of those programs. The shell does not use regular expressions, but grep is. And there are a few of them, like the vi editor and the ed and ex editors and sed, for example. All of these programs use regular expressions. And regular expressions have their own particular set of wildcards. I'm not going to explain all those wildcards to you now because they're quite sophisticated and quite powerful and it would probably take me at least half an hour. The reason I'm mentioning them now is that I want to make sure that you don't get them confused with the shells wildcards 
and to give you a sort of a golden rule when it comes to grep. When you're using grep, if you want to search for just a regular piece of text, then you don't have to do this. But if you want to use any kind of character at all, such as a greater than sign or a less than sign or an asterisk or a colon or anything like that, then it's probably a good idea to put what you're searching for in quotes. Now obviously here I'm searching for a body tag all by itself. There may not be any, but I'm going to search for them anyway. Now because I'm using the greater than sign and the less than sign, which are special characters as far as the shell is concerned, I have to put the thing that I'm searching for in quotes. Single quotes, that is. Let's see if that works. Well, OK, there weren't any. Let's, let's try it again. I'll just try it again without the uh, closing bracket. And there's quite a few of those. The important thing to note is that the single quotes are used to surround the thing that I'm searching for. Now this particularly comes up with wildcards. If I ever want to search for something that involves a wildcard, like for example, find me all the lines that begin with the letter B, that begin with the letter B, they don't just have a B in them, they begin with the letter B, and so on. You, know, you use wildcard characters for that, or regular expression characters, I guess, if you want to be totally precise. And any time I want to use any of those characters, I have to make sure that I put the entire expression inside single quotes, as I've done here in front of you. So make that a bit of a uh, golden rule for yourself. Everything that you specify when searching in grep, put inside single quotes. Finally, oftentimes when you're trying to search for text, you want to search for it through a great big set of directories and subdirectories. You might even want to search on the entire computer for all files in any directory that contains the text that you're looking for. If that's what you're trying to do, then you could use grep in conjunction with find. And I'll just show you briefly how you might do that. Well, you might type in find, find in, say, the current directory, dot, and you might want to restrict it to all files that are named star.txt, Notice these single quotes around star.txt. And then when you found those files, you might want to exec a grep of maybe the word hello inside the files that you find, like so. Now I know that's a long and complex uh, command line, but that's the sort of thing that you could use here. Notice there's no piping going on. We're not piping the output of one program into another. We're simply using two programs in conjunction with each other. I press Enter, and I don't get any results because there aren't any. But that's OK. The principle is sound. There's a lot of things to learn about grep, particularly in relation to their regular expressions. So I suggest you have a bit of a read of the grep man page.